in the last video we set up our edge box where we would have two agents directly exchanging goods between themselves this time there won't be such a direct exchange instead we'll assume there's a third person who's setting up a price for both of our goods and the agents will decide how many goods they want based on those prices let's take a look at our edge box it's the same setup we have our agents a and b and same goods books and coconuts w is our initial endowment which just means the amount of stuff these two agents have initially we can calculate it using what we learned in our last video for a's endowment oa will be the point of origin and it turns out to be six coconuts and two books for b's endowment ob will be the point of origin and it turns out to be four coconuts and four books now let's say that the third person comes in and the prices are set for these goods at one dollar per coconut and two dollars per book to set up its budget line we first need its slope that will just be the negative of price of coconuts divided by the price of books which in this case is minus one by two we also want to know its intercepts i'll be doing it from a's perspective and it will be the same thing if you do it from b's perspective as well for the y intercept this will be our line to be on this line a will only have books so he will have zero coconuts now it is given that a has six coconuts if he sells all of them he'll get six dollars all of which he can buy three books because they are priced at two two dollars each right he already has two books so his total will be three plus two which will be five books with zero coconuts it will be this point for the x intercept a will have to sell all of his books which will bring him at 10 coconuts and zero books which will be this point so that will be a budget line let's bring out our con convex in different curves again the red is for a and the blue is for b we know the optimal point for an agent is when the indifference curve is tangent to the budget line. This makes this the optimal point for agent A and this point the optimal point for agent B. Now let's check if the market is in equilibrium. For the market to be in equilibrium, the total amount of goods A and B want should be equal to the total amount of goods available inside the edge with box. Let's put it another way. The two agents should exhaust all the goods inside the box. Let's check this case in terms of coconut. A initially has six coconuts and to be on his optimal point, A only wants two coconuts. So he'll be willing to sell four of his coconuts to B. Now let's check this from B's perspective. B initially has four coconuts and to be on her optimal points, B wants six coconuts. That means B is willing to buy two more coconuts. So A is willing to sell four coconuts and B is willing to buy two of those four coconuts. So there are two coconuts that nobody wants. That means that the total amount of goods these two agents want is not equal to the total amount of available goods inside the box. Our market is not in equilibrium. What about this case? The optimal for A and B can be represented by a single point as both the indifference curves are tangential to the same point on the budget line. That means the indifference curves are tangential to each other as well. Again, let's check this in terms of coconuts. A initially has six coconuts and now A only wants four coconuts. So A is willing to sell two of them. B initially had four coconuts and now B wants six, which is exactly what A is selling. We can check it for books as well. A initially has two books and now A wants three. For, from B's perspective, B initially has four and now wants only three. So B can easily sell her extra coconut to A. In this situation, the optimal for agent A and B is equal to the total number of goods available. We can check that. There are 10 coconuts available and A and B are exhausting all of them. Similarly, there are six books available inside the box and A and B are exhausting all of them. So this is in equilibrium. Let's try to put that down in terms of its condition. We know that both of these curves are tangential to each other. That means their slopes are equal and the slopes for the indifference curves are given by its marginal rates of substitutions as we found out in the last video. So their respective margin rate of substitutions are going to be equal. That is, MRS of A is equal to MRS of B. 
Now, the budget line in this case is also tangential to these curves. And the slope of the budget line is going to be equal to these slopes as well, which is just minus of PC by PB. So that is a condition for market equilibrium. Now, there's something interesting we can derive from this. This is the first theorem of welfare economics, which says that any competitive or market equilibrium, they mean the same thing, is Pareto efficient. Now, in the last video, we found out that the condition for Pareto efficiency is that their respective marginal rate of substitutions are equal. And in, and in this video, we found out that the condition for market equilibrium, which is that the marginal rates of substitutions must be equal to the slope of the budget line. So in order to be in equilibrium, the allocations will have to be Pareto efficient, which is exactly what this is implying. The welfare theorem has much bigger implications, but it's kind of, it can, it's kind of simple to visualize this in case of an edge with box. Hope you got around that. I'll see you in the next one.